Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. All right, so we're making our way through the Practical Electronics for Inventors book. I believe I'm on page 98 now. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're studying capacitors. And in the last video, we went over determining capacitance. So let's move on to commercial capacitors. Okay, so commercial capacitors like those I'm going to try and go a little bit faster. I know I keep saying it in every video, but I need to move. I'm falling behind on my um, uni work, so I need to actually move through this quicker. I need to get a better understanding of things faster. So let's go. Uh, commercial capacitors like those shown in figure 2.95. Where's that? These. Okay. Are constructed from plates of oil with a thin, thin solid or liquid dielectric sandwich between a relatively large okay sandwich between the relatively large capacitance can be obtained in a small unit uh from plates of thin plates of foil within with a thin solid or liquid okay all right got it the solid dielectrics commonly used are mica paper polypropylene and special electro elect Electro, electrolic, electrolic capacitors use aluminum foil plates with a semi-liquid conducting chemical compound between them. The actual dielectric is a very thin film of insulating material that forms one that forms on one of the plates through the electrochemical action. When a DC voltage is applied to the capacitor, uh, okay, I'm reading. I'm not understanding. The actual dielectric is a very thin film. Of insulating material okay. forms one set of the plates. That oh, forms on okay. That forms on one set of the plates through electrochemical action. DC voltage is applied to the. Okay, all right. The capacitance obtained with given area in electro. Elect how do you say that word? Electrolyte. Electrolytic, electrolytic. Okay, this word is coming up a lot uh, when you're on YouTube saying the same thing over and over again. You sound like an idiot. If you... Electrolytic. Huh? Oh wait. Electrolytic. 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 All right. <laughs> the capacitance obtained with a given area in an electrolytic capacitor is very large to capacitors having other dielectric films so thin much less than any thickness practical solid dielectric electrolytic electrolytic capacitors due to the electrochemical action require that one lead placed at a lower potential than negative lead is in package some surface mount are marked the positive end. this polarity adherence means that with the exception of special non-polarized electric Capacitors shouldn't be used. Okay. Okay, because they're polarized. It is okay to apply a superimposed AC signal riding upon it, provided the peak voltage maximum. Actually, faster. Okay, so I mean, basically, to sum all of that up, that basically says that some capacitors are polarized. Therefore, you probably shouldn't or you wouldn't use those AC cells. The dielectric within a capacitor acts as an insulator. But well, what's the heading? Voltage rating and dielectric breakdown. The dielectric within a capacitor acts as an insulator. Electrons do not become detached from atoms where they do in conductors. However, if a high enough voltage 
fly across the plate to the capacitor. The electric field can apply enough force on electrons and nuclei in the dielectric to detach them, resulting in a breakdown in the dielectric. Um, okay. Basically saying, if you apply too much voltage to a capacitor, it will still um, it will break down the dielectric. Right? The electric field can supply enough force on electrons and nuclei within the to detach them. Bell dielectrics often puncture, offer a lower resistance current path between the two plates. Ah, so that's why I explained. The breakdown voltage of the dielectric depends on the dielectric chemical and thickness. Gas dielectric capacitor breakdown is displayed as a spark or arc between the plates. Spark voltages are typically given in units of kilovolts per centimeter for air. The spark voltage is 100 kilovolts per centimeter. For gaps is narrow as basically tiny. The 30 kilovolts per millimeter for gaps is wider 10 centimeters. Other things that contribute to the gap breakdown voltage level are electro electrode shape, gap distance, air pressure or density, voltage impurities with dielectric. That the nature of the external uh, humidity temperature. Dielectric breakdown can occur at lower voltages between points or sharp edge surfaces that have been rounded and polished surfaces. Electric field or constant sharp project. This means that the breakdown voltage between metal plates can be increased by buffing the edges to remove any sharp irregular. Faster with a gas dielectric air. Experiences breakdown, the arc is extinguished. Faster can However, if the plates become damaged due to spark, they may require polishing. But this is talking about like people actually repairing capacitors. I assume because we're using cheap tiny ones to do that. But I've seen those big commercial oh yeah, are we talking about commercial stuff? I've seen those big commercial capacitors, like bigger than iPads. Um, capacitors with solid dielectrics are usually permanently damaged if there's dielectric breakdown, often resulting in short or even an explosion. Yep, I had a power supply blow up on me. Manufacturers provide what's called a dielectric with standard voltage, rest in voltage per mil at specified. Also provide a DC working voltage, it takes into account other factors such as temperature. Gives you a guideline to the maximum safety limits provided before dielectric breakdown. Um, as a rule of thumb, it is not safe to connect a capacitor across an AC power line unless it's designed for it. Most capacitors with DC rating may short the line. Okay. Special AC rated capacitors are available for tasks with other AC signals, peak value of AC voltage. Okay, so can I just sum all of that up by saying die electric acid. I know it doesn't always equal explosion, but to me that is that way. I, I keep moving my iPad, so ruining the camera angle, which happened to me in the last video. So I need to keep my iPad still. All right. Uh, Maxwell's displacement current. An interesting thing to notice with our parallel plate capacitor is that current appears to flow through the capacitor as it is charging and discharging. Okay, but doesn't flow under steady DC. You may ask, how is it possible for current? Yeah, I googled this a lot actually. Using, but I get it now. So how is it possible for current to flow through a capacitor ever if there's a gap between the plates of the capacitor? Do electrons jump the gap? <laughs> As it turns out, no actual current or electron flow makes it across the gap, at least in an ideal capacitor. Of course, because leakage. There is leakage. Uh, as we calculated a moment ago using or 
I'm looking for. Charge on an air filled capacitor plate can be expressed in terms of the electric field area and permittivity of free space. Right, which that's what we've covered. And make sure I don't so you've got this equation here, right? Capacitor. Then you've got the charge on charge is to epsilon zero times area times by the electric field base electric area over voltage times voltage divided by the distance. Okay. Some time ago, Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, eighteen thirty, time ago, yeah. Noted that even if no real current passes from one capacitor plate to the other, there was nevertheless a change in electric flux through the gap of the capacitor that increased and decreased with the magnitude and direction of the flux. Electric flux for electric flux for a parallel plate capacitor is approximated by that Greek letter. What that is? Um, it's, pro it's approximated by electric field times area while we're charging while we're changing electric flux is expressed as um for over times by electric field in the area divided by distance between them times time you know what that says max believe the electric flux permeated the empty space between the capacitor plates and induced the current in the other plate. Given the state of knowledge of electrodynamics at the time, he envisioned a displacement current which coined crossing the empty gap, which he associated with a kind of stress within the ether, the stress being electric and magnetic fields. The displacement current helped supply Maxwell with a missing component to complete a set of electromagnetic formulas known as Maxwell's equations. He associated the displacement current with displacements of the E. With a bit of theoretical reckoning, as well as some help from some experimental data, he came up with the following equation, known as the displacement current. To explain how current could appear to enter one end of a capacitor and come out of the other. Um, the thing is, like, all these equations here, when I look at them, they're all kind of like written for people who understand mathematics. Like, a lot of assumptions here. I don't know what these words mean, symbols mean. Like, I assume if we're talking about displacement, then you know, time. Mm. Okay, anyways, let's just. Okay, go on. All right, so let's do max. Well, because the more important thing is I just memorize it. Look at my ID. ID here. ID is, was it called leakage current or was it? How current could appear then? Question? So what, how do I, uh, okay, displacement current. ID is displacement, displacement current. Okay. And we do that by ID.
Why have they put is equal to D over D? Okay, because we already know what Q is over here. Times by absolute zero. And they've got into epsilon zero equal to D. I don't know what that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to check that. When I do my notes, eventually, so what I'll do is I'll work my way through this book as far as I can get. You know, without getting completely lost. And then once I get completely lost, I'll then have to go back through my notes and start looking at what parts didn't I understand and then Googling them. Just to be fair, I did skip through like the first, whatever it was, 60, 70, 80 pages of this. So maybe the author means then. Oh, I free. Thing is, so they did put up here that this O with an I in it is equal to A. So, from my own standing, whatever that symbol means, I could I just done over. That is we put this Okay. Um, all right, so Maxwell's displacement expression appears to provide the correct answer. Yeah. Uh, modern physics provides a different model for displacement current than that envisioned by Maxwell and his EFA. Nevertheless, the results obtained using Maxwell's equation closely correlate with it. You've got faster, you've got current coming in, you've got one end of the capacitor, the other end of the capacitor. This one's positively charged, this is negatively charged. Electric field between them. And you've got current displaced the current displacement is that was called displacement displacement current is equal to uh, epsilon zero, which is permittivity of a vacuum, and then more to all of that that multiplied by I still don't know what that is actually. That multiplied by the distance between them times by whatever this thing is. But I'm just going to call it the electric field times by the area of the plates. And all of that divided by distance times time. But once I figure out how to, whatever this thing is, like how to do that equation, probably Google, then once I figure out how to do that, then I could work that out, I suppose. That's not too bad. Okay, as a side note, there also exists a magnetic field due to the displacement current, as shown in the drawing on the right. 
magnetic field due to displacement current. You can calculate the magnetic field using what's called Maxwell's generalized form of Ampere's law. However, the size of the magnetic field turns out to be so small that it essentially has no practical influence when compared to electric. However deep, however deep you can go when trying to explain the physical phenomenon within a capacitor, such as using Maxwell's equations or even modern physics, practical equations that are useful in electronics really don't require such deep. Instead, you can simply stick with using the following charge-based model. I love a water analogy. Thank you. Um, okay. Wonder I think stop here. Finish all of this. Okay. Alright. Yeah, I think we'll stop here and then we'll pick up from charge based model of current faster next video cool thanks for watching guys see you. peace